Hi there, this is image 19. In this video, we are going to discuss the radiographic findings of florid cementoosseous dysplasia. We'll start with two periapical radiographs, then we'll compare the findings with panoramic radiographs, and finally we'll review a CBCT scan of the same patient. Reviewing these multiple images will give us a better understanding of the florid cementoosseous dysplasia. Let's start with the periapical radiographs. We have two periapical radiographs of the mandibular anterior region. The alveolar bone has receded. You see some calculus deposits. There are no signs of carious lesions. These teeth responded positively to vitality tests. The mandibular anterior regions show well-defined radiolucent areas. These may look like apical periodontitis, even a radicular cyst. Usually, a radicular cyst should have smooth corticated border. It is important that you conduct a vitality test. Even in the absence of vitality test results, look for radiographic findings of the lamina dura, signs of carious lesions, or root fracture or crown fracture. This condition, if localized, is known as periapical cementosseous dysplasia. We'll have to use multiple images to see if this can be classified as periapical or florid cementosseous dysplasia. In the didactic radiology course, you have already learned this pathology. This video will refresh your knowledge. As you recall, when the lesion is uniformly radiolucent, this is stage 1 of cementosseous dysplasia. Stage 1 is radiolucency at the apices of the involved teeth. In this stage, it is very easy to confuse the cementosseous dysplasia with apical periodontitis. Therefore, vitality tests of the involved teeth are necessary. In stage 2, the uniformly radiolucent areas are replaced by areas of radioopacity. In this stage, the lesion has mixed density with areas of radioopacity and areas of radiolucency. These radioopaque masses are surrounded by radiolucent areas. In stage 3, the lesion is mostly radioopaque. A thin radiolucent band can be visible around the radioopacity. The cementosseous dysplasia can be classified into two types, periapical and florid. The periapical cementosseous dysplasia is localized, limited to one sextant of the jaws. Most commonly, it is in the mandible. The florid is generalized, more than one sextant of the jaw, and often in both the jaws. Some literature states two or more quadrants would qualify as florid, while some other literature insists that it has to be at least three or more quadrants. This may be an academic debate. The classification has minimal consequence or impact on the patient's care. In addition to the classification, this condition had different names over the years. Again, these names have minimal consequence or impact on the patient's care. Currently, the preferred name is periapical cementosseous dysplasia and florid cementosseous dysplasia. So this is what we saw on our periapical radiographs. Multiple radiolucent areas, probably continuous, around the apices of the mandibular incisors. I have two panoramic radiographs taken over a year apart. This is the first panoramic radiograph of the same patient. You can appreciate multiple radiolucent areas. The mandibular anterior lesion is not as prominent on this radiograph as we saw with the mandibular periapical radiographs. The posterior lesions are much more prominent. On the left side, the lesion extends from the area of the third molar to the area of the premolar. On the right side also, you can see that a lesion has extended from the area of the premolar to the area of the second molar. Watch this lesion with the third molar and we'll compare this finding on a different panoramic radiograph taken a year later. On the maxillary arch, at least there is a lesion with the left second molar. This lesion has elevated the floor of the maxillary sinus. There is probably another lesion with the maxillary right third molar. The pedial spaces of the maxillary lateral incisors may be little wide. So remember this area, the mandibular right third molar, and let's see what happened a year later. 
So this is one year later. Now you can see that this lesion with the mandibular right third molar is much larger, mostly radiolucent. So this is stage one of the periapical cementoosseous dysplasia. The molar regions have started to show increased radiopacities, probably in stage two or stage three. Let's review the findings on a CBCT scan. We are using on-demand 3D to review the scan of this patient. Let's start from the axial slices from the level of the maxillary molar epices. In the maxillary molar regions, bilaterally here as well as here, you can see irregular radio opacities. We will review these in cross sections. Also, you can see some expansion in the maxillary incisor apical region. Let's go towards the mandibular arch. Compared to the left side, you can appreciate that there is some expansion of the buccal cortical plate, some expansion and thinning of the lingual cortical plate. This blue line represents the slice here. If we come to the area of the mandibular anterior region, this is the lesion with some expansion of the cortical plates. Let's review the images in coronal sections and I'll start from the area of the third molar. So the blue line indicates the third molar region and this is the image that I'm going to show you. So this is the maxillary right third molar and that's the lesion. At the same time we'll look at the mandibular arch and you can appreciate some expansion on the buccal cortical plate and thinning and expansion of the lingual cortical plate. As we move mesially, I'm in the area of the second molar. So this is the second molar region. We have periapical cementosseous dysplasia. This is the first molar. And that radio opacity indicates that this is a stage two of the lesion. We can appreciate that the sinus floor is elevated. So let's go quickly through several teeth. All the teeth have multiple lesions. And I'm coming to the area of the incisor. So this is central incisor. And in the central incisor area, I see some radio opacity and radio lucency. So this would be stage two. This is the mandibular interior region, perforation or thinning of the lingual cortical plate as well as thinning of the buccal cortical plate. This is the lesion, very thin labial cortical plate, lingual cortical plate is also thin. The maxillary central incisor, left central incisor, you can see the radio opacity with the area of radiolucency. Going further distally, in the area of the second molar. These are the areas of periapical cementosseous dysplasia. This is the area of calcification. So we have stage two lesion on the mandible. This is the area of radiolucency with scalloped border. Some areas of radio opacity, some areas of radiolucency. The trabecular bone here is sclerosed. So coming back to the panoramic radiograph, this is what we saw. We saw the expansion and these lesions were not visible on the periapical or panoramic radiograph, but the CBCT scan allowed us to see lesions associated with most of the teeth. So the clinical features of fluid cementosseous dysplasia or periapical cementosseous dysplasia. Typically, you will see this in middle-aged women of about 40 years age. It is possible to see this condition in men, although females have nine times more likely to be affected. Most often, this is in African-American women, also possible in Asian, also in Caucasian. The teeth are vital unless otherwise involved. There may be cortical expansion and we saw in our case, but these are usually late stage findings. So how do we manage fluid cementosseous dysplasia? If this is focal or localized lesion, start with a vitality test. The diagnosis is made by clinical and radiographic features. If you make a diagnosis of periapical cementosseous dysplasia, 
no treatment is necessary. These areas have low vascular supply. Therefore, healing is delayed in case of surgery. Surgery may lead to osteomyelitis, so avoid surgery. The diagnosis is based on radiographic and clinical findings, so avoid biopsy. Biopsy may also increase the risk of osteomyelitis. Finally, try to eliminate the need for extraction. Instruct the patient to maintain oral hygiene. We want to avoid the need for extraction or root canal treatment. Thank you very much. Please come back for another intraoral radiographic interpretation video. I'll see you soon.